Having been in business for four decades, I decided to celebrate it by booking the ultimate hunt of a bongo in the Congo rainforest. Like with many others, my plans were delayed by the corona pandemic. But finally, in October 2020, I met up with my best hunting friend Jens from Denmark at Addis Ababa Airport. With the correct measures in place, it's really no problem to travel in Africa right now. And at lunchtime, we reached our destination of Brazzaville, the capital of the Republic of Congo. The capital city is situated next to the Congo River, which at this point is 38 kilometers wide. And opposite is Kinshasa, the capital of the other Congo, the Democratic Republic of Congo, formerly Zaire. The capital is named after the French-Italian explorer De Brazza, who acted with the French Geographical Society to open up this part of Africa, which later became French Equatorial Africa. De Brazza was highly regarded amongst the local population, which explains why the capital is still named after him and his being interred in a well-maintained mausoleum in the city center. The Republic of Congo was founded in 1958 and afforded sovereignty from France in 1960 after the so-called Brazzaville Conference, headed by French General Charles de Gaulle. What is unknown to many is the fact that Brazzaville for a time served as the capital of the so-called Free France during the Second World War, when de Gaulle had fled from the Vichy regime in Paris. With domestic flights to the north still suspended, we commence a 14-hour overland trip to the hunting area in the rainforest bordering Cameroon. It's an interesting journey, showing the effects of neglect and lack of good leadership, which are so prevalent in Africa. Not always comfortable. And everywhere you see overloaded lorries and breakdowns due to the large number of so-called potholes in the roads. With no emergency services, you have to do your own rescues, and fellow lorry drivers will assist so that they too can continue their journey. Let's get the hell out of here. This is actually the highway to the north. Yeah, whole line the here, yeah, snow yeah. Yeah. As we get closer to the rainforest, the roads improve, and finally we turn off on the last piece of dirt road towards the hunting camp. It's extremely wet, and in normal years, the hunting season would end on September the 1st, but with the corona-related cancellations, they were tempted to extend the hunts into the rainy season. And in hindsight, it was probably not the best decision. Come in, it's hot here. Yeah. Finally, we reach the camp at the Ngoko River, and it's an absolute tropical paradise. Well equipped, even with a decent Wi Fi connection, we settle into the air-conditioned ensuite rooms thatched with palm leaves and with a fantastic view of the river and the rainforest. Our adventure can begin.
We start out by sighting the rifles, which are supplied by the outfitter. However, Jens is always over-equipped, and not even our first heavy shower could dampen his enthusiasm. Kan du ikke bare skyde med det lort, de har på? Den sidder også på. Det er dobbelt. Ja. What are you doing in there? Is it raining? Ja, nu er Jens gået i flyverskjul. That's the new umbrella. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The trees in the rainforest are enormous, up to 45 or 50 meters. We are joined by the pygmy trackers and their team of Basenyi, Congo Terriers. We don't exactly think they are pedigreed, but very useful when hunting in the rainforest. Pygmy trackers with their pangas will open up the jungle for us during the next 12 days, and the sound of the pangas hitting the bush becomes a part of the hunt. I'm sure they eat them. Yeah. Here we find the first signs of forest elephants. They have smaller bodies than those of the elephants found in other parts of Africa, but still reach up quite high when they rub off the mud on the vegetation. That's a big male. That thing's good, yeah. yeah. And then this came in really fast. Yeah. Amazing how they can come in and on a call like that. Just run. This again? Yeah, amazing how they run in on that call. Yeah. They just, uh, yeah. <laughs> Jens is a big collector of various species and subspecies, and here he has bagged the small western blue diker. He manages to add three different species of dikers, but the last of them, the yellowback diker, eluded him. I had a chance, but declined. I got a Peters diker myself from a tree stand. My pH was otherwise occupied and I could not get his attention and he nearly fell down the tower and looked very surprised when I fired this 375 Magnum, but I got my die The bongo is the beautiful orange ghost of the rainforest, and it is hunted on foot, following its tracks with the dogs. In 250,000 hectares of rainforest, they only bag 12 solitary bulls each year. They never hunt family groups. Their incredible beauty and ability to avoid hunters and hide in thick bush make them the absolute top trophy in Africa. We found the track of an old bull and now a two hour chase on foot will follow. With the rich vegetation, stalking is virtually impossible. And without the dogs finally setting the bull, one would never even get close.
For me, it was two very exciting hours. Shoot him, shoot him. You can tell him. Is it, is it off safe? Yeah. You can shoot him. Oh, I don't want to. One more. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> the bongo in Congo. I think you will all agree that the bongo is the most beautiful animal in Africa. So I don't hunt by the tape, but my PH Jean Luc brought his tape. Seven, Seventy-seven and a half. Okay, one. Yeah, well. I've hunted now for forty years, Jean Luc, without a tape. Yeah, that's. I understand. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> but do you know we we don't like that too, eh? No. We don't like that. No. But it did qualify as the second biggest bongo of the season which was not exactly a negative outcome. Here is Jean-Luc making the first important cuts for the skinning of the animal. 99% of the hunters that shoot a bongo do a full mount, but I don't like having that in our dining room, so mine will instead be given a so-called pedestal mount, where parts of the back skin will also be used. Once again, the inventive pygmy trackers use bark and headbands to carry the venison and trophy back to our vehicle, which according to the GPS is just under two kilometers from here. Okay, and also goes the first time here. It's really not a problem measuring only 1 meter 50 when you can carry this load in bare feet back to the vehicle. Good job. Merci. Oh, my God. 
That's the skinny. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Whether in Alaska, New Zealand or Africa, I always do my own skinning of the cape, so at least I can only blame myself for any mishaps. Soon afterwards, the head is boiled and cleaned. Hunting in the rainforest is not suitable for anyone suffering from any kind of phobias. The worst were these huge ants. If one stepped onto them, they would bite you and your trousers would come off in record time. Maintaining the infrastructure of the hunting area is a mammoth task and explains why this type of hunting rates as one of the more expensive options. Every day, roads had to be reopened by pangas, or even motor saws. Two months prior to the opening of the hunting season, the staff will be in the area to establish new roads and open up existing ones. Bridges are continually repaired and we got over safely. However, our joy was short-lived as the heavy rain had washed away another crossing and we were unable to repair it straight away. We thus had no other choice but to return to camp. Let's hope we get safely over the bridge once more. Back at camp, I can finally enjoy a sundowner drink. Of the 12 nights, I only slept four nights in the camp. The remaining nights were spent in the tree houses. I also get a chance to dry my hakila boots, excellent tools for this type of hunting. The garden is full of tropical fruit supplying the kitchen, but they also grow cocoa trees, which are an excellent crop for small-scale farming, where the beans are fermented and dried in the sun before being sold to wholesalers. There are approximately 25,000 gorillas in this protected area, and often, they manage to disturb us in our hunting. Many of the animals of the rainforest are nocturnal, and that's the reason for our overnighting in the tree stands, so that we can stay until sunset and be ready for early sunrise the following morning. Those nights in the tree stands were unforgettable, the sounds of the insects, birds and mammals were incredible and very loud. So I'll be trying again. He got off the side of the shorter, he's right? 
Nu øh, ser vi, hvad det sker. Vi har det hele klar her. Next morning, we are back to tracking, trying to find a bongo track for Jens, but without much luck. I would have loved to chase him into the bush, and we even found fresh droppings. After eight days, things were getting a bit tight for him, and yet again, he returned empty. <laughs> He did bag an interesting species, the Red River Hog, which takes a lot of luck to get. Yet again we sent Jens out with the best team of trackers and dogs, but to little avail. They don't really use conventional dog leashes here in Congo. Our trackers were going to overnight on the trucks, so they stock up with traditional African donuts. Cooking nice cakes for the staff. So I'm the track and the leader's my park again. So I'm the hand. I keep them one. So Jens. After getting close to bagging a forest sitatunga, I gave Jens my tree stand to test out, and mercifully, they came back with a monster dwarf forest buffalo. Here Jens is enjoying the fillet of the dwarf forest buffalo. We found a very good buffalo track next morning. It's a real big track. Eh? Oh yeah, yeah, for the forest buffalo. Yeah. I myself tried hard to bag a buffalo, but stalking them in this bush is not easy at all. If you do get a chance, it will almost automatically be an attack, because you surprised the buffalo at close range. It was worse and worse and worse each time. Hunting is not always just about what you shoot. A good chase can be just as rewarding. Uh, you must tell them that I'm still uh, having fun. No, no, sure. Now, Jens will play Father Christmas in November. He brought used clothes from home to hand over to the staff. Mercifully, not his own, as the pygmies would all be running around in very saggy pants. Yeah, messy from us too. Yeah. <laughs> For 14 hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you will only see this place next year. What time? May. May. Yeah. May. Uh, February, probably. Yeah. <laughs> they were all like this. Yeah. <laughs> like a frog. <laughs> the rainforest once again lives up to its name.
Now we are back at the equator. Jens has a foot on either side. Jens going over the equator. It's selfie time at the equator. The phenomenon was invented by a former Danish prime minister nicknamed Gucci Helle when she planted herself between Barack Obama and the British prime minister during the memorial service for Mandela in Soweto. Back in Brazzaville, we enjoy a lunch with a view of Kinshasa on the other side of the Congo River. In Congo, there are also corona restrictions and we all had our temperature taken on entering the restaurant. Strangely enough, we all had the same temperature, 36.7, and later we established that the gauge could only show 36.7, so that they did not have to turn away potential clients. <laughs> With the assistance of higher powers, I managed to get a corona test for my re-entry into South Africa. And the airport blessed us with our last African experience, a luggage weight that had been tampered with in order to facilitate a little social equalization, as we call corruption in Africa. Our French-speaking guides got us through it all, and once on the plane, we could think back on one of our most amazing hunting trips. We reimagined the sounds, the smells, and the friendly pygmy people that we had encountered. Jens will be back for his bongo, and I will return sometime to hunt the dwarf forest buffalo in the more open coastal region of the Congo. Thanks for joining us on this amazing adventure.